Hi friends, welcome. Today I want to talk about the work of Jimmy Chin. He is an adventure photographer and filmmaker. He has 2.3 million followers on Instagram. You probably know who he is if you've spent any time on Instagram. He is a photographer who works with National Geographic, and of course he is the director of Free Solo, which is a big deal right now. Now Free Solo is a motion picture. What we're going to be talking about is his photos. These are still frames. So it will be like watching Free Solo, but if it didn't move and there was no audios, uh, it, audios, if you are not angry and enraged by this point in the video, let's carry on and talk about his photos. They induce shivers and acrophobia, which is a fear of heights. And the reason why is because he takes photos from very high and he accentuates that highness. Links below. Okay. The first photo of his that I want to take a look at today is actually not a photo of his, but it's a photo of him taking a photo. We have him hanging high above the ground, suspended in midair via a rope that starts on the left side of the frame close to us and moves up to him where he's holding it with his hand and then connects to the top of the frame. He is suspended thousands of feet above the ground, seemingly. We have a beautiful rolling mountain scene in the background, a uh, separation between him and the background due to the light streaming in, sunset-esque looking light. The, uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about this photo is because it demonstrates the work he puts in and his dynamic of taking photos. He seems to hang in there with whoever he is adventuring and climbing with. He seems to like an adventure himself, and he puts in a lot of work to get the photos that he ends up taking. And I think this is a, a good visual demonstration of that truth. The next photo was actually taken by him. We have two people hanging from an arch in China. Very small people, very big, tall arch. And you get a sense of contrast between the two. We have beautiful rolling mountains in the background, blue sky uh, filling up the mm, halfway to the top of the frame until the arch comes over. This is a photo that I want to talk about for a specific reason as well. It is an example of of the fact that he is a master of creating a sense of massive scale in his photos, and you will see that throughout the rest of his photos. This is something that repeats throughout his work as well. In another one, we have a scene with beautifully moody light, a pinkish rock face making its way down the right side of the frame. Most of the photo is this bluish tint with a, a mountain range in the background. Then we have a climber who is attached to a rope that's attached to the top of the frame, which runs all the way down to the bottom of the frame. That rope is red and the climber is wearing a red jacket, which contrasts well against the, the blueness of the overall scene. We also have a sense of how high the subject is here because one, he is so small, and two, he is so high up in the frame, and you see how far his rope goes down. It creates this feeling of endlessness, and he uses a lot of different techniques in his photos to create this, this feeling of height and sometimes endlessness, but also he will introduce context which shows you the end of the possible fall that you you might incur if you decided to free solo. Uh, and and so it's interesting because he'll go two different ways. Sometimes he'll remove context and sometimes he'll add context. And this next photo is a fantastic demonstration of adding more context to demonstrate a sense of height. We have Alex Honnold climbing what looks like El Capitan. He is climbing up a very small crack. He has more to go. He has come quite far. We have a very small Alex, just like in the previous photos. But we also have very, very tiny trees on the ground below, which indicates that those trees are quite far away. Different context points that let us know how high he is, as well as the dramatic angle, which leads me to my next point. Jimmy's angles are impossible feeling. <laughs> he looks like he's floating in midair in this one, and this is something that separates him from other photographers. In another one, we have a sunlit rock face and climber on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have a much darker background, very small trees, once again, other rock faces. 
we have tremendous context here, and there's a lot of contrast between the rock face and the ground. Also, Jimmy is very thoughtful with his compositions. This is a, a very well thought out, poetic, and interesting, exciting framing, and it definitely pulls you in. We have another photo of a couple of climbers making their way up a snowy rock face, snowy background, very jagged uh, mountains in the background. Over those mountains, the sun is lifting up, lighting the climbers from behind. The sun has a nice starburst on it, which tells me that he probably took this photo at F-22-ish, and you see that a lot of his photos were taken this way, which I think is interesting. The light, the way it is constructed in this photo, gently pulls the focus away from the subjects and puts it on the entire scene, the fact that they're less lit. It makes the photo more about everything in the photo and less about the subjects. There's this sort of dance. But this photo, to me, demonstrates the hard work that goes into climbing and the fact that it's not this intense, quick experience of death-defying insanity, but it's more of a slow meandering process that's very mental. You see them twiddling around with their tools, playing with their ropes, preparing for the next part of the climb. Another one taken of a silhouetted climber hanging from a silhouetted rock face, and even the mountains in the background are silhouetted, so all the light is coming from the direction in which the photographer is pointing. We have lit up clouds that looks like the the sky that you would see in the background of uh, the Star Wars part where the cloud city is when they're on that planet. That's what it reminds me of. We have absurdly massive scale demonstrated here. You can't see the ground. You don't know where the ground is. You just assume they're 190,000 feet in the air. We have a rope curling as it makes its way up to the climber. It's connected to the left-hand side of the frame, creating sort of a leading line. There's a lot of separation between the climber and the sky because of his separation, or her, separation from the mountain. It's a very cleverly done framing. We don't see the top or bottom of the rock face, which makes the rock face feel infinitely huge. And of course, the person is small once again, and the scene is impossibly big. And it speaks to how humans push the limits, this photo. We have another one that demonstrates how humans like to push the limits, but this time the reason's a little bit different. It has more to do with the fact that this person is climbing a rock face. It's going up the left-hand side, and the background is covered in thick snow. It looks Antarctic, this landscape. I don't know exactly where it was taken. And this tells me that the base of this mountain that one would climb is already cold and in a frigid and extreme climate. This person decided he would climb up to the top of this mountain and said climate. And these are context points, once again, that make you feel how intense and extreme what we're looking at is. It, it immerses you into the world of climbing a bit more. And capture some of the magic that you might feel if you're actually on the side of that mountain. The person is covered in a yellow suit from head to toe, which helps contrast against the very minimalistic background in terms of color. There's not a whole lot going on. It's sort of white and some black from some crazy jagged mountains poking up and in the distant background. We also have that F-22 sun, again, just poking out of the the uh, rock face up at the top. Very clever the way it was put there. And you can see that the climber is very focused as well. He's got work to do. In another one, we are pointing dramatically straight down. Once again, it looks like Jimmy is flying in midair. We have a climber, and then we have a guy with a camera that is used to make motion pictures up higher pointing down on the climber. He looks like he just has his arm wrapped around a rope, and that's the only thing keeping him up there, but I'm sure there's more. Uh, this demonstrates the work that goes into filming a climber as well as the climbing at the same time. I think that's fascinating. I 
have to remind myself that there are filmmakers and photographers out there that on a daily basis, they're willing to challenge themselves much more than I am. They're willing to put in tremendous effort and put themselves in dangerous situations. And that's inspiring, and it should be inspiring. Maybe the difference between the photos you're creating now and the more compelling photos that you could be creating in the future has a lot to do with your work ethic. This next one was taken in Greenland. We have a climber slash skier, I assume, due to the skis on the climber's back, making their way up a steep, snowy mountain. We have a V-shaped, visceral, vertigo-inducing slope behind the climber. And Jimmy captured this feeling because of the dramatic angle that he took this photo at. It's almost pointing straight down. And you also have the person for scale, which lets you know what the orientation of things are. So all of these thoughtful steps create what we have here, which is a a dramatic photo with a lot of intensity to it. We have another one of a skier, distant, high up on a mountain, making their way down the mountain into a cloud. This cloud is dark, and it eliminates information from the scene. You don't quite know where the skier is heading. You just know that they're going into that cloud and they're going to come out the other side, hopefully if they don't hit a rock or tree. And this elimination of information makes the photo more daunting. Another one with a lot more information this time. We have a vast landscape. The skier tucked down in the bottom left-hand corner neatly. It's, It's fantastic very small person and so we're starting to see that he repeatedly distances himself himself from his subjects to create a sense of enormity tiny subjects more environment and we also see that this little human is taking part in the rich tradition of adventure that we humans like to engage in to challenge ourselves and to enjoy ourselves. So this photo is just as much about the human spirit as it is about the beauty of the world, I suppose. We have another one of a photographer doing what photographers love to do the most, documenting stuff. He is standing on a rock that's poking in from the bottom left-hand side of the frame, black rock. The way that it's done here adds a lot of intrigue. I think it's fantastic. He's wearing a red jacket, which contrasts well against the white and blue in the rest of the scene. The background is snow with these interesting, crazy formations. And in the far background, we have mountains with no vegetation on them, indicating that we're probably high up in altitude. And then we have the sky. The composition here is a very tight, but very open composition. One reason it's tight is because of the portrait orientation here and also the tighter focal length. It's open because, for example, you can see the sky. The mountains aren't cut off. So it's inclusive, but it's not flabby with extra stuff at the same time. Another one pointing down on a climber dramatically who is making their way up the mountain. Climber much closer this time in comparison to a lot of his previous photos. In the background, we have beautiful mountain formations that are just mind-blowing, rocky, no vegetation once again, indicating that, of course, we are high up in altitude. The mountain formations are aesthetically wonderful, and he puts them just below the top of the frame. So we have sky and then these crazy, jagged mountains. My arm popped again. What the heck is going on? (laughs) Uh, The scene is very minimalistic in colors. It's white and gray and a little bit of blue. So this very colorful climber who bought their, you know, North Face stuff at the climbing shop in in Denver is popping off the photo. And we also have a sense of scale, height, and difficulty in the way that this photo was taken. And you see all the little ways that he accentuated this here. Another one of a skier making their way down a steep mountain in an infinite snowy environment. If I tried to ski this, I would actually die. We have in the foreground the skier in yellow contrasted against the overall white and blue scene. The skier is very small 
In the background, we have what looks like a glacier coming through, which, holy crap, is enormous. What's interesting about this photo to me, though, is we have a pleasing competition between the subject, that is the person, and the background, because the brightest point in the scene is the background. We have sunlight streaming onto the glacier and onto the mountains. This creates a pleasing battle between the two, which makes the photo not so much, that was me by the way, notification, which makes the photo not so much about the skier, but about the skier and the environment in a unique way. This next one is quite a departure from most of his work. It is rather abstract feeling, not a whole lot of detail here. We just see the shapes of a snowy mountain, a silhouette of a snowboarder, I believe, making their way down the mountain. And this mystery pulls us in and plays with our minds. It asks us to fill in the gaps, the context gaps, using the wet computer in our head as opposed to feeding us all of that information. And that is certainly one way to take a photo. This next one is definitely one of my favorites of his. We have a person sitting down reading with a headlamp at night. We have, a, you know, because that's when you would read with a headlamp. In the background, we have mountains, beautiful, huge mountains. Uh, it looks like a Himalayan-esque vibe all around. I'm not sure exactly where this photo was taken, though. But you feel the coldness. One reason you feel the coldness is because of the snow, of course. Another reason, because of the cool tones. But another reason, because it's nighttime, which accentuates this feeling. And it, it, it makes it sink into our bones in a different way. We have a sort of unbearable beauty that's demonstrated. I also think that's accentuated by the fact that it's nighttime. It creates a much more mystical and awe-inspiring kind of vibe here. The subject and the environment, once again, have a pleasing battle. And I love that you have the story of this person doing a normal thing in a very abnormal environment. They're engaging with nature while maybe planning, maybe they're writing in their diary, they're making a graphic novel novel or a cookbook, perhaps. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really fantastic photo about humanity and how we interact with the world. Another one, also taken at night, of some jagged rocky mountains, no vegetation, lots of snow. We have a person on the left-hand side standing on one of those closer mountains, wearing red, and in the background we have more enormous mountains, so there's some nice layering going on here. Once again, the nighttime makes the scene feel more cold and more emotionally captivating. It has more of a, a vibe to it than his daytime work, and once again, he also created tremendous distance between the person, and the person wearing red allows that person to be contrasted against the overall blueness of the scene. And this is a little detail that really takes this photo and draws your eye to it more than perhaps if he was just a silhouette. Another night scene, we actually see stars in the sky in this one, which add a lot. I believe this one was taken in Nepal, although I was not able to find the information to confirm this. I would assume from context clues that's what's going on here. We have an orange tent, we have a huge snowy mountain behind the tent, stars in the sky above that, and then in the top right hand corner we have in a diagonal fashion some flags in motion. This was this motion was captured due to a long shutter speed. These flags make me think that this was taken in Nepal. You can find these flags around base camp and I guess different places if you're climbing Everest. They mean, uh, they mean things, but I won't go into the meaning of them. We have a portrait orientation, a lot like the previous ones. Very exciting composition. Uh, a lot of potent context here. Everything in the scene sort of means something. Nothing feels extraneous. Is that the word? Hmm. The layers make for a stronger photo than in, if any one of these elements were missing from the photo. 
This next one is quite different than a lot of his, but it shows off his dynamicness as a photographer. We have a bunch of friends hanging around playing Scrabble on a mountain. I assume they're in the, the midst of one of their adventures. We have interesting expressions all throughout, smiles on faces, a hand going down to pick up a piece and move it. It's a, a tight composition that makes for a very lively photo. We have the heads cut off. We have the backs of the people cut off. It also looks like he's in the group with them as opposed to far away, which in a sense has this sort of community vibe to it where he's, you know, he's a part of the action. But the fact that everything is cut off makes the photo feel more exciting. Uh, the dramatic angle pointing down makes the photo feel more exciting. The edges are also glorious. Nothing's poking in in a strange way. You can tell that he paid attention here. And like I said, very engaging expressions. And if you don't have engaging expressions, what are you doing? You know? We have another one of a mountain. But in the foreground, we have the silhouette of what looks like a pilot's helmet and the interior of perhaps a helicopter or a plane. I would assume helicopter because I don't think pilots wear helmets in planes. This provides context, and it also makes the photo more intriguing because you have a sub-framing element that's cutting out extra things that you don't necessarily need in the photo. But yes, the context of us being in the helicopter with the pilot, it makes it more than just a photo of a pretty mountain. This next photo is freaking fantastic. It is of a volcano erupting in Russia in the distance. The only reason we can see that it's a volcano in this night scene, stars in the sky, as soon as the long exposure, is because the lava that's shooting out the top of it high into the sky is landing on the volcano and illuminating the outline of it. In the foreground, we have a helicopter sitting on a landing pad. And the only reason we can see that helicopter is because it's lit up from a floodlight behind it. So it's a silhouette. So we have a lot of context here and it tells a wonderful story. It tells us what's happening and why we should care. I mean, the volcano alone is a reason to care, but extra care provided by the helicopter. We have another one of a man sitting on top of a high mountain, snow all over this photo, portrait orientation. Once again, the man is sitting in a tent. We have climbing gear all around. He looks like he's putting on his shoe. Maybe one, maybe just a second ago, he was sleeping. Now he's waking up to take on the day. We see a beautiful expression on his face, a smile. Uh, sometimes I don't smile when I'm inside a warm, air-conditioned, and heated building. So this inspires me to smile. Uh, the composition is compact and lean, but it is dense with information. The next one taken in Nepal, we have a person crossing one of the deep crevasses of death on one of those ladders that you see. And the person has just begun to cross, which makes the photo feel more intense. And it's always, it's always crazy to me to watch the ladders sort of bend as they walk across. Maybe they're already bended, but maybe the weight of the person bends it down. Either way, it looks hectic and horrifying and dangerous, and it is indeed all of those things. So uh, there are a lot of things about this photo that make you more anxious when you look at it. One being the fact that the person has only begun to cross. They have a lot of, they have a lot of way to go, but also there is, you can see below the person there's a lot of room below the person, so you get this feeling that they would fall into infinity if they did in, indeed fall. The next one is so interestingly different, but also so interestingly the same as most of his photos. We have a man climbing the Freedom Tower in New York City. I assume he's going up to change one of those light bulbs. And we have him well lit against the busy background, which I think is important for a photo like this. The edges are terrific with such a busy background. We see ground zero. Uh, we have an abundance of context here. We have a very focused expression on his face. And we have his signature, I'm flying in the air taking a photo angle. 
And finally, we have Alex Honnold himself standing in a bathroom with his 84 pack and he is brushing his teeth. He has headphones on. What I love about this photo, the story it tells, is it's a very abnormal person. If you ever listen to an interview with him, he's a very abnormal person. He likes to climb mountains without ropes. I mean, rock walls without ropes and and possibly kill himself every day. And he's doing something normal here. (laughs) So overall, when we look at Jimmy's work, we see a couple of things. One, the work he puts in for his photos. I was listening to an interview with him today, and he said that he sometimes puts in hours and days to get a photo. Also, the passion for being outside in the mountains, adventuring, is something that I think feeds his work. Him putting himself in the environments where these stories are naturally. And I think it's a good question for us to ask ourselves, what is that for us that can feed our photography naturally and help us tell more compelling stories? Also, mastery. He spent a lot of time doing this, a lot of time doing this. Practice, practice, practice. You can never get around the time that you have to put in to become a more skilled practitioner of your craft. Also, community. He has built up connections around him that have gotten him this plethora and immensity of opportunities that he has come about over time. And so if you are a visual artist of any sort trying to make your path in the world, your relationships are incredibly important. Relationships breed opportunity. So that's it. If you enjoyed this and you enjoy the videos that I've been putting out recently, if you hit the like button, that lets me know that you appreciate what I'm up to. And if you subscribe, that makes you a very neat person, but only if you like what I'm making. I will link below to his things once again. Um, I would love to hear your recommendations for other people who I could talk about. Hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.